Hi, welcome to spring. Yes, British summertime has started and we're now getting into, look, I don't even have a big coat on. <laughs> There's a bit of a breeze, but it's, it's not cold, so that's nice. Now, you've often heard me talk about my entry level DSLR. You know, I bought this because I wanted to learn how to use photography. And over the two years that I've been putting the channel, the videos out on the channel, I have actually learnt all the modes and all the ISO. I know the whole triangle. Um, I think it should actually be more appropriately called a slide rule. So at the top you would have exposure, in the middle you'd have shutter speed, at the bottom you would have the ISO and you'd be able to regulate each of those till something in the middle lines up. Does that make sense? <laughs> However, I've got a little exercise to do for myself and it might benefit you. Because we know that the camera's got priority modes, it's got the auto mode, fully auto, you can just do everything. So you can have fully auto, it, it just makes sense. You know, when you're learning, but you're not sure what you're doing, you just fire away at auto, Cam camera does everything, regulates everything. You've got auto mode without flash. So again, it does everything, but it doesn't use the flash. Then you've got the usual suspects, the MASP, manual, auto, shutter priority, and priority mode. But then you have these presets, certainly on the Nikon, the D32 that I'm using, and you will have portrait, landscape, um, children, because children flit about a lot, so the camera needs to do its adjusting. You've got sport mode, you've got um, nature, and then you've got nightscapes. So this is what I'm interested in, landscape mode. So what's landscape mode? It's an auto mode and it's going to do everything for me. So it'll do the ISO, it'll do the shutter priority, it'll do the speed priority. It just gives you the best picture. But the thing that it's supposed to do is do its own processing. So really accentuate blues and greens, certainly in landscape. So make it pop, basically, HDR, right? I've got this lovely wash of blue sky and I've got the green field because the crop is starting to grow. And I've got this wonderful scene of a, a farmhouse with a windmill. There's a couple of trees to the right and the left. Now, in order to exercise the processing, I'm going to do two pictures. I'm going to do a zoomed in one like this, but I also want to pull it back. Maybe use the polarizer like that to, for me to accentuate the skies, because that looks quite nice. So the exercise then is if I was doing this in manual priority, which I would do, I would set the ISO to 100 and I would think about the depth of field and I would think F F11 works because it gets everything focused in the front and the back and then because it's aperture priority i'd probably allow the camera to do whatever speed it needs and if it needs anything lower than a 30th of a second that's fine i've got the tripod right so i'm going to go into aperture priority i'm going to make sure my iso is at 100 so that it doesn't blow out so what i'll do is set the iso to 100. i'm going to take two shots i'm going to take my own shot at f11 iso 100 and it wants a 50th of a second so this is the zoomed out shot i've got lots of blues let me just level it up so i've got iso 100 f11 40th of a second it wants now this is aperture priority mode how will that differ when I move the camera into landscape mode? So there's the first shot, which is on the screen. <laughs> I'm not going to point this time. This is in landscape, what are these presets? Landscape preset. Now it's got, it's moved the ISO to auto. It's a tenth of a second, but it wants two hundredth of a second, so a lot quicker than I was giving it at a fortieth of a second ISO 100. So what's that telling me? Because it's gone into auto, it's going faster, it's letting less light in. What will it do? It will bump up the ISO. So 
let's take that shot. And I think, because I've put it on the screen now, if you compare the two back to back, so my settings, camera's settings, my settings, camera's settings. My settings were ISO 100, F11, 1 40th. Camera's settings, ISO 400, 1 250th of a second, and F10. It altered the depth of field, it altered the shutter speed, but it bumped the ISO up. And I'm not frightened about ISO bumping up. It's a bright day. I'm not gonna get grain, am I? and the histogram is smack in the middle, but it's done the pop. So what it said is, you want ISO 400 for this scene, you want a 250th of a second. So shall I try that? I'll move my ISO, I'll bump it up to 400. I'm going to drop the f-stop the, um, f to f10, and I'm gonna take that exact same picture, but in my settings. <laughs> So apart from the clouds, you know what it's done? It's brightened up the image. So by pushing the ISO up, it's brightened the image. That's what's made it pop. <laughs> Lovely. So, you know, I'm learning something here. It shouldn't always be ISO 100 at a 40th of a second for F11 or F10. Actually, I can make the shutter go quicker and I can bump the ISO up to compensate for the lack of light because of the speed of the shutter. Nice. I'm going to zoom in. One, one fortieth. So, a manual shot. What's it doing? I better, better be quick here because the battery's going flat. You'd have thought I'd have brought it in. Oh, that's really pleasant, you know. Right, I've got battery in the car. <laughs> Because I did aperture priority F11 at a 40th of a second, then I did the landscape scenic mode. It told me what it used for its settings, and then I changed my camera to do those settings and took my own photograph. So I'm gonna give you the photograph that I took with the suggested settings of the scene priority, uh, the scene mode, and then I zoomed in. It's a rather nice picture. I'm going to find one more location and change the battery on this. Um, have a look at that picture, see what you think. Should we be using <laughs> the scenic modes? It could be a good thing. You know what, it's, it's rather an interesting concept. Should, should a beginner photographer, obviously you're gonna be trying to learn aperture, speed, ISO, all of that, but it won't do any harm to take advantage of the presets, you know, just to, especially if you're just out and about, you know, you're just taking a shot and you're, oh, look at that, and you focus in and you take a shot. If you're in scenic mode, the camera's gonna give you all those um, settings anyway. But what I've got here, I've got this lovely rolling countryside. This is Elam, so we're in Elam Valley. And, um, oh no, that's Barham there. The Elam Valley's behind. But the way the sun is washing down, I could get a nice pano out of this, you know? So actually from the left here, where the sun is shining down on that paddock over there with the sheep and the horses. And as I pan round, you can see different washes of light. So the landscape preset should really make this pop. And what's it going to do? It's going to increase the speed and also increase the ISO because it wants to give me that dynamic range. Lovely. And I've got countryside with greens and blues, it's all very lush. So 
the same exercise, ISO 100, because that's what we're taught as we're learning. Um, I think I might try three, I might do it in manual as well. And then I will go into manual priority. I'm going to bump the ISO up to 400 like it was at the last shot. And it's suggesting 1 60th of a second. This is just random stuff. And then I'm going into scenic preset, landscape preset. It does, it changes everything. It's really strange. And what's it giving me? It's, it's a bit dark with a, a, a big pop on the right, and that's probably the, um, the, the light on the field. ISO 400, F10, one two hundredth of a second. Interesting, interesting. I think I want that shot across there, though. That's such a nice scene with the houses and the valley in the background and the trees in the foreground. Lock the focus in. So again, into aperture priority drop the ISO to 100. Of course, I could be taking the photographs in RAW and JPEG. And in RAW, I could take the image in post-processing and do all the pops and the bursts. But I shoot in JPEG. And the problem with that is the camera will do processing on my image as the JPEG is taken. So what I'm seeing on my screen and then ultimately on the computer is processed image based on what the camera has done. So perhaps then, if I was selling these images, I would think about taking shots in RAW and process the colors and the dynamus, <laughs> the dynamics myself. However, I'm gonna do the same exercise again. This is in Aperture Priority F F11 with ISO 100, and that set the speed at 180th. And then if I go into landscape preset, that has given me that image which wanted ISO 400 again, but it set the speed at 400th of a second, really quite quick. So um, in order to get the fastness or the speed, it needed to bump the ISO up. Fascinating. Right, I'm going to set up for a panel while you have a look at what I think is the best image here. <laughs> and I'll put the info on the um, screen. This pano I'm going to do is all in the landscape preset. So I'm letting the camera do all the thinking. All I'm doing is focusing and choosing the composition. Shot one. I can't really see what I've got on my screen here simply because I've got the sun shining down this way and my clothes are reflecting on the screen. So I'm taking the shots, assuming they're going to work. I think they will. the pleasant countryside with greens and blues to make things pop. Four shot it's going to be. And spring is coming and I like that. I like that a lot. I can't wait for summer. And should I be taking photographs in, in midday? Well, ordinarily no. You're going to be thinking sunrise, sunset, dusk, dawn just to get the different hues and everything. But you can take photographs in the middle of the day. What time is it now? 10 past one. I must rush back to work. This is my lunch break. So there's the pano. So 
So what did I get out of that? I got the fact that it might be worth considering the presets. Um, you know, if I've got the tripod and I'm composing a shot and I think I've got the best aperture I could have, I might take a shot with a preset first just to see what the camera's suggesting because you can, we can use the camera. You know, it's giving us all the settings that it thinks it needs for a good shot. And then I can go back. So if it wants ISO 400 at 4 hundredth of a second, I could think, well, yeah, that's fine, but I'm going to drop those and half them. One two hundredth of a second at ISO 200, and then I'll have to adjust the, comp uh, the aperture to compensate for the fact that I'm letting more light in. So bring it closer down, which is fine on a landscape because I can push the depth of field. Hey, if you got something from that, give the video a like. I'll see you in another video. There's going to be another one soon. Bye for now.